Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are looking at the NECA Prometheus Series 2, and this is the Deacon. But really, I feel like this should have been called the Prometheus Alien Pack, because we got more than just a Deacon, even though he is the star of this set here. And I'm very excited to have the Deacon, because that is our real alien from the film, or at least the more xenomorph-looking alien. Obviously, the movie was a heck of a lot more about the engineers and all that. They were really the star aliens of the movie, in my opinion. But by the end, I think this is what everybody kind of wanted to see. That little bit of alien DNA in there. The final kind of scare of the movie. So, I'm definitely happy we have this creature here. But first off, let's take a look at the accessories he came with. First up for accessories, we have what is referred to in the movie as the Hammerpede. These are the little, what I thought was going to be the face huggers of the movie, but they really just end up being these kind of leechy snake kind of things. We get two of them. This first one here is the kind of more simple, closed up one. The head is just kind of this little ball shape here on the end. It's really hard to make out detail on them just because they're so kind of whitish, bland, tan color. It's kind of a cool body shape, that sluggy, leech look. And then they have a bendy wire inside where you can bend it around and contort it and all that good stuff. Then we also get the one that I guess it gets its name from, because this one actually does look like a hammer or a cobra. And this is the one that made me really think of Face Hugger. It has those kind of wings on it, and it looks like it would just clamp onto your face. We're showing in the movie that they are very similar, but they're not quite there the trilobite really kind of takes that role over in this movie as opposed to these guys but he is kind of cool looking thing they both have the bendy wire like i said so you could pose them all different ways i kind of liked him coiled up like this and it's a fitting addition on to the set next up we have the engineer head basically a head off of the chair suit I checked it against the original release. It's a brand new sculpt. It's actually a little bit bigger than the other one, but it has all this decay, zombie-ish things sculpted on it. The eyes are all eaten out. Just a bunch of stuff. There's no hole at the bottom. It's a solid base, which is kind of odd to me. I guess it could have fossilized or gotten dirt over it or something, but this was supposed to be, you know, his head severed off in the door. So shouldn't there be, like, a hole here. I don't know. That seems a little weird to me. The trunk is cut off. I almost said truncated. And then you pop this thing open. And we have the infected engineer head. And he looks pretty cool. It's a similar head, but different sculpt than the other ones we've gotten. He's got the black eyes, black in the nose. The teeth are all messed up looking. He has almost like a feathery texture, zombie look to him. Really, really cool looking. I like this little add-on. It's definitely going to be a nice little display piece to have alongside your Prometheus stuff. One thing I would have liked a little bit more of, and I say it now, but maybe I wouldn't have if they gave it to us, but I almost think I would have liked it if he had a little bit of the black goo kind of dribbling out of parts of his head or something. Just make him a little more grotesque. But in all reality, it's still a pretty cool piece and it looks pretty good. The Deacon also comes with a clear display base. This is kind of necessary because he doesn't really want to stand on his own. It kind of has like high heels back here. Basically, the Deacon only stands on his toes. That's the way he's pre-posed. So he actually will peg into these little pegs here and then his feet will rest against these parts here. It's a necessary evil and I don't think it's going to look too bad to have him displayed on this. Now on to the Deacon itself. This is a pretty crazy little figure. He's got his pointed head. He has a nice kind of blue color all over the whole thing with the black slime on him. This is kind of him as a newborn. He still has that goo from coming out of the engineer. But a lot of great detail. You can see the spine going up through here. You can almost make out the bones under his skin. His skin has a nice gloss to it. Down here you can see his hips. All the kind of ribs in here, the high shoulder bones, bony, huge hands. His feet, I like his feet. His feet look very human. Out of all the weird alienness of him, his feet just look kind of somewhat normal, which I think is neat, just in a very strange way, even though they only have four toes. Just overall, a pretty basic paint job, kind of the same all the way through, just the dark blue with the black spots and a little bit of shading. But... 
he works. He's a cool little design, and basically what you would expect out of the Deacon alien. For articulation, he has a ball joint at about mid-neck. It's kind of a weird spot to have the ball joint, but I guess they figured it would give them the maximum room without messing with the sculpt. So you go really far back, you can go pretty far forward, side to side, tilts. It's a very nice joint. He's a mid-torso joint, which also can go forward and back, side to side, tilts, all that good stuff. Not a bad one there either. Up in the shoulders is where it gets a little funky. It can hinge out to the side, and the whole thing can kind of rotate, even though sometimes you have to pull it out a little bit before you can rotate it. The way these shoulders are sculpted, they inhibit it from just turning in some places, and there is no forward and back motion in the shoulder joint, which is a bit of a disappointment. Here at the elbow, he can just simply hinge. There is a rotation there, but it only will rotate that forearm, so all you can really do is just do that, which is pretty unnecessary with this figure. Then he has ball jointed hands, he has ball jointed hips, forward back out to the side pretty easily, bend at the knee, he could also swivel there but once again it kind of doesn't do much of anything. And then he has ball jointed ankles down here. Now the one extra piece of articulation, one of the coolest factors of this guy is the jaw. We could take the jaw and open it up and he's got his little rows of teeth in here, pretty nicely sculpted. They did a decent job on that, and then we can actually take the whole thing and kind of slide it down and forward, and this is kind of hard when you don't really have fingernails. But you could pull it out and get that whole goblin shark mouth thing going on, which looks really cool. It's kind of the tongue look to the top of that jaw there, and then you just like... Rah! Really neat. I mean, it really does do a good job of replicating the end of the film. And even with this, you can actually take the jaw and close it, and it kind of looks like he just has a big tongue sticking out. It's got like the Gene Simmons thing going on here. But uh, I think the full effect with that mouth open just gives it a really cool look, and that's definitely how I'm going to have this guy displayed. Doing a size comparison with the Deacon is a little hard because, well, do you extend his legs out as much as you can, or do you have him crouched down? But here you can see him about as tall as I can make him stand, which is not how you really see him in the movie. And we have the David figure here on the right, and then we have his parents right here on the left. We have the trilobite in mid-attack on the engineer. So you can see the engineer is a much larger character. I don't think you could really fold down the deacon to fit inside of his chest cavity. I really didn't believe it in the movie. It didn't look like he would have fit in there. I assume he would have had to be kind of a squishy character, like his bones are really malleable to fit inside or something. But the scale is pretty close. It's nothing ridiculous. And in here, if I kind of crouch the Deacon down, how I would probably have him posed, or at least closer to how I would have him posed, he is pretty short looking compared to the other two, which I think is kind of necessary with this character. That's pretty much how I would expect him to be. And here as a further comparison, I have him back standing mostly up next to the Giger alien xenomorph there. So you can see that they are definitely very different. The Deacon is a lot skinnier, a lot scrawnier, his head's not nearly as big, the whole jaw thing obviously is a big difference. And just the overall look is completely different between these two characters, even the number of fingers and stuff. The only weird similarity that really draws these two together is the toes. They both kind of have these weirdly shaped feet with little turned out toes and stuff. But definitely wanted to show these two guys together because I'm sure I'll get the inevitable question of is the Deacon mold the same thing they're using for the new NECA Aliens line and all that kind of stuff. So here you can definitively see it would not work at all. It's definitely not. It's its own thing completely. So that's the Deacon, or the Alien Multipack here. This little set was something that I really had hoped NECA would do with the Predator line. I was really hoping that with Predators we would have gotten the dog and the Falcon for the Falcon are all packaged together in a little set. And we never got that, but at least with Prometheus, it seems like NECA kind of listened to that idea and gave us the actual Alien along with the cool little engineer head and the two hammer teeth. So you really end up with four creatures in this pack if you look at it that way. 
I think that makes this a great little set and highly recommendable. The Deacon doesn't have a ton going on. His sculpt is solid, but he's not great. His articulation isn't really great either. But really, what you're going to do with this guy is you're going to pose him. You're going to put him somewhere, have him looking cool, and that's going to be the end of it. And I think there's definitely cool things to be done with this guy and cool little poses to strike with him, despite the lack of articulation. Heck, even if you're just an alien fan, you could almost get this as some little concept aside, different version of the Xenomorph. You can keep the mask on the engineer head and have your own little space jockey head to put in with your collection. And the hammer peds, um, they're similar to face huggers, but not quite. So you can do whatever the heck you want with those. But I think it's a pretty nice little set and definitely something cool to have. I'm glad I picked it up. It looks like from here on out with the line, NECA's looking mostly at humans. Granted, we have some infected humans coming up. We have the Holloway. We have the Fifield, which looks really awesome. He's probably the closest to an alien we're going to get anytime soon because he has that big bulbous head and the cracked dome and all that stuff, I think. So that one I'm definitely looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the rest, too. Very excited to keep expanding the crew of the Prometheus. And especially with the new alien stuff coming up, this has really got me primed for that, too. Knowing that this guy might have some lesser articulation, but that they're going to take some of these ideas and move them forward into those new Aliens figures. I'm, I'm pretty psyched about it. Make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. I know I posted a picture of these guys when I found them at Toys R Us. And until next time, this has been another Outside the Box Review. Prometheus has landed. <laughs>